And we can do it predictably, right? Yeah. So we can take that process, if that process is designed, right, we can have this sort of predictable outcome. If we do our part, right, and we set the stage, and we give them the environment to be in, that most of the time, this sort of process actually happens. Yeah. So, sounds magical. It is magical, <laughs> and it happens, right? So, so what is it about that process of going from that initial setting the, the fundamental piece of those, those wilderness skills, talk about that process of moving from the hard skills up to the soft skills, how that leads personal development. You talked about relationship and trust with the guides and with the, the clinicians. How does, how does that all work together? You, you probably have synthesized this a little bit. So can you, can you speak to that? Yes, I'll do my best. All right. Um, my perception is that uh, most clients, when they arrive out here, arrive with very little skill to be able to live in this uh, you know, environment, uh, very little um, healthy personal interaction skills, very few uh, skills around the areas of um, self-care, personal hygiene, um, and, and very little balance across um, the, sort of the base of Maslow's hierarchy of need. Um, so for them, like it's kind of a deconstruction, you know, uh, I can't, um, I can't just pop a, something in the microwave and eat it. I have to have like some forethought and okay, how do we get to there? I mean, I have some food that you gave me that I'm not really comfortable with. Um, you, I have this pot that you're constantly on me to clean. Um, there's this fire thing that's happening that I don't quite understand. There's a lot of sort of unbalance for the client for the first few days, few weeks even. And so for them to get to that level of trust, trust in the uh, fellow clients, trust in their staff, trust in the program, trust in the therapist that, you know what, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be safe. I'm going to be cared for. Um, watching them go through that and watching them internalize that and, and say, oh yeah, like I got this blister here and then having someone put their hands on their feet and say, I am caring for you. Let's talk about this. Let's, let's maybe drain that or maybe just band-aid it. And then let's talk about like, maybe we got the wrong boot size, you know, and really showing them that, um, uh, together we're going to get through this and we're going to show you how to do these things one at a time and slowly we're going to build on this relationship between us uh, right in the beginning I just see it along the lines of food shelter you know clothing heat you know just the real basics of life and then like you mentioned somewhere along there we're, we're talking to them about some soft skill stuff but oftentimes they're not going to see the connection. You know, they're just going to kind of focus in on, um, yeah, the, just the food and the sleep and, uh, you know, so-and-so is annoying me and, and just those really, um, some of it's kind of hard skill, but a lot of it is just sort of immediate, immediacy kind of stuff. And they can't uh, oftentimes see the result of two weeks down the line or two months when they're getting ready to graduate, etc. Somewhere in the middle that switches and that changes. And all of a sudden they've got down, hey, I can bust a fire. Hey, I can dig a fire pit. Hey, I can create a shelter. Hey, I know how to survive when the weather rolls in and everything just goes to, you know, sideways. I know how to do that. And the level of confidence and self-efficacy that they they gain from that allows them then I think to see or to start to see bigger picture stuff around like how am I am I interacting like on a healthy level with my my uh, uh, co-clients and my staff like wow like I've really drugged my parents through the ringer you know so now I'm not uh, hyper focused on just getting through the day because I have some level of confidence that I, my hard skills are solid you know two to four weeks in they should be fairly locked into that and now 
the therapists also are, you know, pulling them through, you know, well, tell me more about that relationship. Tell me more about you getting really uh, angry with Johnny and how did that work out? Let's develop some skills along that line. And hopefully the staff are doing the same such that maybe three quarters of the way through their stay, the hard skills are there and they're solid and they're mentoring other people in that. Completely changes their perspective about themselves. They are no longer the person who needs to be cared for. They are the person who's able to care for someone else. And they dialed in a lot of those soft skills. Like I know how to sit now and look you in the eye and say, man, I own that. I was so pissed at you the other day and I wanna own that and I wanna to talk to you about that. And they know what that feels like and they know how to develop those friendships and those deep trusts and go through those awkward stages such that then they can see, hopefully, they can see how those pieces um, they'll be able to take from here. You know, it's just not just something that they come out here and go, well, I'll never have to use this stuff again. You know, hopefully they're able to see, oh yeah, like I can see how my, my relationship with my parents have morphed because of the changes that I've gone through and I can see how my life is gonna be different because of all this huge skill set that they've developed out here. Mostly because they've been forced to, that there isn't anywhere to hide and you have natural consequences of, you didn't put your gear away and now mm -hmm. it's wet. I didn't do that to you, you know, and, and having to deal with that uh, is really powerful. Um, I hope that answered your question. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so when when the gear does get wet, what is the instructor's role in relationship to a student who maybe didn't follow the teaching, didn't follow the suggestion, didn't follow the example, and now has wet gear? What's the opportunity for an instructor? Uh, multiple, um, depending on. My perspective anyway depending on okay where we're at on safety okay so yeah it's 40 degrees and everything's wet and the winds blowing in and okay you know we'll, we'll look at uh, you know and, and talk about how important it was to take care of those things and now maybe I'm gonna kind of take them by the hand and and bring them and their gear over to the fire and help them through like drying some stuff and staying warm and maintaining a safe, uh, you know, level of uh, not not going to hypothermia, that kind of stuff. Um, more often than not, though, it is just a okay. Well, now you're cold and you're wet and because you didn't follow through on some basic expectations. There is, of course, the instructor's role there. Oftentimes, there is the community's role there, where everyone else is going. My stuff is dry because I just clearly did the simple thing that everyone asked me to do. And, and it doesn't take much then for the field instructor to be able to go, hey, here's little Johnny, his stuff is dry and, and he's fine. Why is it that yours isn't? Like, let's, let's talk about that for a minute. Um, and being able to kind of process that with them. Is it through, you didn't understand, maybe? Maybe the fault is mine. Maybe I wasn't clear enough in my communication. And rather than constantly sort of being the, you know, berating adult, which they're usually used to, you know, it's like, oh yeah, like, you know, I suck, you know, versus like, well, okay, you know, I will own the piece that maybe I didn't communicate that very well to you. Let's talk about that so that we're clear in the future. Now, what do we do now about that? Um, I like to use the approach of, well, what do you think should be the fix? You know, like what what is best going to serve you now? Okay, you're cold and you're wet. Um, what do you think that we could do together uh, to get you warm and dry? And watch them think that through and reason it out and go, well, let's see. I guess I can take my stuff and hang it here and let the breeze blow on it and bring my body over and start warming you know, some stuff around the fire. Uh, if they're not quite there, then maybe I'm talking them through that, but helping them to see that there's a solution to the problem that they've created. They created the problem. Um, and rather than rescue them and jump in there and go, oh, give me all your stuff and I'll just dry it for you, etc. cetera. Um, 
allowing them to do that and hopefully allowing them to mentally walk through the process so that they they understand that sometimes they're not capable of that and you just kind of have to get them there so that you just direct them you know and okay well here's how you do it mm -hmm. you know and walk them through that but um, oftentimes that's where I see the role of the instructor is in being a, more of a mirror to them and allowing them to see oh that's your behavior uh, now let's see you know what the consequences of that and then maybe help you to find your own solution to the problem that you create. Thanks for watching. Please like this video and subscribe. The Primitivus Project is made possible by the generous sponsorship of Wingate Wilderness Therapy. To learn more, visit WingateWildernessTherapy.com.